and we're back. <laughs> Welcome to Revlog. Uh, we're we're still down a man, and today we're down a referee. I don't know how this is going to well, go. <laughs> you're right. You're right. the 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 whistle will not be blown. So, uh, so Katie, bar the door. Episode. Yeah. You know, here we go. <laughs> Let's. And by the way, let me just say that um, I think that this. I think we should have some theme music for this episode, and it should be Toto's 99. Wow. I, 99. Oh, okay. All right, sorry. That's all I, you're going to give us? Uh, that's, that's it. Wow. I, well, I could do 99. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. So I, I don't know this. Go look it up yeah. on iTunes or whatever. <laughs> whatever your preferred platform is. <laughs> Very uh, good. Platform shoes, which probably would, would have worked <laughs> in Toto's time. So, <laughs> that is Toto. Yeah. That is hilarious. That's great. Well, never a bad time for good articulation, I would, as the choir director would say. I feel like I'm watching Frasier talk about popular music groups. <laughs> That's awesome. Toto. Well, <laughs> Pastor Chris is, is out today. He'll be back. We'll be full strength next week. I, I'm believing for full strength. We, we've missed Pastor Brian being with us these last couple of weeks, but in the interim, Pastor Brian I, preached. I was not here? Well, yes, y'all, you're, you're around. Y'all did a... Y'all did... A couple of we, these, and we, I wouldn't... It's true. I never got the... But I, but, but you preached, and I wasn't there. Oh, you preached in your Tom Ford tan suit. <laughs> that is... It's one of my favorites. Tom Ford. I, I'm telling you, it's... You wear that, and <laughs> lives are changed. I, 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 I always comment on it, don't I? You do. Okay, I... Yes. I, I love it. <laughs> Well, today we continue in Matthew chapter wow. 18. Um, we're, we're doing kind of a verse by verse uh, these last uh, weeks in our Better Together series. Today we're looking at uh, verse 5 to 14. It's kind of... The 99. The 99. 99. 90, 90 and 90, 9. 90, yeah, the, the old yeah. way of saying it, the 90 and 9. And the, last week we, we included chapter uh, verse 5, and, and today we start with verse 5 and, and go through 14. I find it interesting that... That in this parables of Jesus here, the, him talking to his disciples, that he talks about children specifically that we need to be like them, and then he kind of turns the tables and says, um, "Woe to you if you are not, and more more than that, if you cause them to stumble." Right. And these are some pretty fiery words, literally fiery words. They are that Jesus, literally, as you said, this is as close. What did you say? As, this is as close as Jesus gets to. Turner burn yeah. kind of message that, exactly. that we're all Baptists are all familiar with from the from the, from the days. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, he specifically has some some pretty harsh words for causing folks to stumble. Mm-hmm. I think I've shared this story in Revlog um, in the past, but one of the first interviews I ever had at, in Northside with uh, O'Connor High School. Now, this old principal um, who's, who's just a couple years from retirement, but one of my favorites to work for. Long, tall Italian guy, talked with his hands, you know, just, um, but he told me as I sat down in the interview, he said, you know, I'm 65 years old and, you know, I don't sing. So basically setting up, you know, interviewing the choir director and just knowing, just letting me know that he didn't know anything about music. And, and so he just, and the band director was in there, the band director and the principal interviewing me. But he said, you know, I, I don't sing, you know, I had a kindergarten teacher tell me one time that I couldn't sing. And it broke my heart. And it's, a, it's one of those stories that I've never forgotten because for 60 subsequent years then, he believed that he couldn't sing because a kindergarten teacher told him he couldn't sing. Uh, or at least yeah. that was yeah. his perception, yeah, yeah. right? And it just reminded me the power of words that we have when talking to children. And, I, and that, as I read this scripture, I'm reminded that, that one offhanded comment to a child, one little turn of phrase in their mind can, yeah. be, can be concrete and cement that will be a stumbling block for them for the rest of their lives that they will have such a hard time getting around. And I think that's exactly what Jesus was saying <laughs> here, that if you are, are careless with your words, if you're careless with how you love and care for children, you might as well be like someone tying a millstone to their head. And That's it, right. It is, that is danger, and, and that, that is strong words. You know, um, children are, I mean, you think about this, um, children are, there are no more vulnerable creatures on the face of the earth than children. Mm-hmm. I, uh, um, and I would say children are the most vulnerable beings on the earth because you you have you look at all of the animal kingdom right they're ready to go they're ready to go 
but an infant, a small child, is not That's and right. cannot survive in the world um, on her own or his own. And it is, uh, I think, I think we often think of children as little, you know, just little people, but but they're not fully formed uh, in their character or their thinking or their emotions. I mean, physiologically and uh, all the intangibles too. These these are people in formation, right? In formation, I like and that. they are not little adults. They are not, you know. And somebody said that I heard recently uh, was in a conversation with that children. He was he was saying this particular person was saying um, that we often hear that children are resilient, mm-hmm. and he said. More correctly, children are malleable. Yeah, not necessarily resilient, and they will be shaped according, and yeah. they will carry a shape for the rest of their lives, yeah. uh, for good or ill. So, my undergraduate degree is Bachelor of Science in Education. There's there's different ways to get a bachelor's degree, but yeah. but the Bachelor of Science in Education, lots of psychology, lots of different classes on adolescent psychology, you know, child psychology, um, in, in in specifically in, in teaching, and so you learn a lot about the child's mind and you know Piaget, the stages and ages of of development and how you approach them. And, you know, specifically thinking about music, I mean, that's, that's you know, my frame of reference, of course, is um, kids are unlimited until we limit them. Kids, uh, you, we, we demand structure that, that whether they like it or not, their structure is good for, for children. But, but mm. what I love about them is when you put something in front of them and you in, encourage them of, of seeing possibilities for them, they will, they will achieve it every time. Yes. If you set if you set barriers for them, then you you are limiting them Boy, not just for Aaron, that, that time, so good. but but really f- for for all time. I mean, you know, musically, you 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 know, Mozart is something kids can't do. That's that's just that's fooey, you know, because kids don't know what they don't know. They don't know right. that they can't do it, and right. that's it's that kind of wide open, just all things are possible mentality that I think Jesus is tapping into, saying that's. You need to see kingdom possibilities when you look out, not just the barriers that you, by your own brokenness or your own um, experiences, have have put up, these walls that you've put up. I, Jesus says, I didn't put those there. <laughs> That's right. Well, Jesus himself was always opening those doors of possibility. Yeah. You could do this, or what about this kind of life? Yeah. You know, and, and people would accept or reject that, but he, he didn't say, jump through this hoop. He said, look at this possibility. Yeah. And th- this is... This is this applies to how uh, children grow, and I think I think Jesus starts out certainly talking about actual children, but by the time he ends up here, he's talking about all kinds of vulnerable stages. Yeah, because of life, later I in think. that scripture, he's talking about you know, children in the faith. I mean, he he makes that distinction right. of young young believers, and yeah. I, it's the same kind of philosophy. It's the same kind of approach that you know you know. Hardened believers will come up to you and say, sure, you know, right. don't or you shouldn't or wait mm-hmm. or, and it, there's wisdom in listening, but but also there's danger in, you know, when it's 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 prescriptive, it's just it's just you shouldn't or you can't, that that kind of boy s- stumbling. Yeah, and I, I think uh, I was thinking about this passage of scripture in light of that, um, and I wondered, I'm, I'm wondering what it would be like to to flip that a little bit because I I read I have read that and do read that as a warning to me in how I treat vulnerable people but it's also for me it's also God taking care of me where I am vulnerable because I I in in some in some ways, um, in many ways, I am going to be the less seasoned person, and somebody's going to have influence right. and power over me. Right. So this is for my protection too. Yeah. I mean, th- I have a responsibility uh, with those over whom I have power, but other people who have power over me um, in life have responsibility too. Yeah. And so I'm taken care of in this 
too. There's always somebody further down the road in That's right. sanctification or just, just on this faith journey that, that and, and so we, you know, it protects on, on both ends, Jesus being the ultimate authority, but right. we, we driving it all of it from him, through him, to him. It's and, and I could be I could be wounded um like a child, you know, in relate uh, relative to somebody who has greater um responsibility or authority or has you know is my elder or whatever i could be wounded like a child could well be that that just talking about this journey directing this this path that that just reminded me of another thought that hurt people hurt people that's right that you know you could be wounded and then you could pass that on to your ministry that's that right. you could pass that on to yeah. the, the people that you love around you that's right. that to me wow that's that's yeah that, and and ha- have I? You know, <laughs> is this? Is this? That's this, in part two. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> off camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that's that's so true that that this this kind of protection that Jesus gives us. That, that, that I mean, this is, we're all we're all provided for here, and and not only that, but just the severity with which he he these are. In no uncertain terms, that, right. that you causing somebody to stumble is is a is a dire offense. That's right, and Jesus. Jesus warns us to use our power for good, mm-hmm. and He warns others to use our power for good, or to use their power for good when it comes to us. So we are the beneficiaries as well as the the accountable yeah. uh, folks. In and this. we're and, both. And thanks be to God for the Holy Spirit to kind of be our. Um, Arbiter, kind of to know, you know, you know, you need to back off here. You, you need to. You, these things are not from the spirit. You know, what, whatever, however you're proceeding. So we have to be sensitive to kind of that leading and that understanding that, you know, we're, if if we feel an offense or if we ourselves are projecting that on others, yeah. that we need to figure out where that's coming from and yeah, deal with it. That's right. And and absolutely, I, I, you know, there's the sheep. There's the Oh, tie, yeah. a, tie yeah. a millstone around your neck. Right. There's the gouge things out. But one of the things that I that just stuck out to me this morning, and we were talking about it um, before we started filming, was this idea of guardian angels. That I, just really struck me in a way that I really hadn't perceived it. But God is talking about, he says, their angels, their, the, 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 the little one's angels see the face of God. And, it, and it's kind of an interesting, you know, Jesus is talking about this protective um, army, uh, this host uh, of heavenly beings that they're watching over. It's kind of a, you know, other than Frank Peretti, I, I don't know that I ever, ever really, you know. Did, there can, is a blast from the past. Yeah. Like Toto, Frank Peretti, <laughs> I think I think he joined Toto. You think I'm so? Not, no, I'm, I don't, I don't know. think so. But, but okay, now you, you name, you listed off these things. Uh, okay, and help me here. It's the sheep, it's yeah. the millstone. This is not in yeah. any particular order. The, the maiming of the yeah, body right. um, and the guardian angels. Okay, how many times does Jesus have to say he takes the welfare of, of human beings who are in faith uh-huh. seriously? Yeah. And that, boy, that's, that's a really good reminder to us that if we feel alone or isolated, yes. if we feel as though we are walking a valley... That God is saying, you have no idea the battle that's being fought for you well, that's right true. now. I I would rather somebody be maimed than harm you. Yeah, I would uh, than than do you uh, an injustice or or harm. Yeah. Or I would rather you know or or I'm getting all the news about you that is fit to print. You know, like <laughs> right. my guardian, your guardian angels are are reporting, and you know, I have my I have my favor on you this is this is uh glory to god in the highest and on earth peace goodwill to those on whom his favor rests i mean this is the god who has turned toward us and is for us and i i'm also reminded as we read this that he's speaking to the church he is speaking to believers that's right so it's this is not slings and arrows from outside this is from within the walls that's right and that's how damning is that? Right. That that we 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 do harm to one another. Yes. You treat each other well, Jesus says, mm-hmm. and I I am serious about this. Yeah. That's that we we need to be reminded that we we often do a good job of of trying to 
ward off the, the culture, society, whatever right. ills that are happening out there. But we need to be reminded that sometimes we harm each other and, and we, we do it within the church with some frequency so that we need to be hear, hear Jesus' words that this is not... This is not a flippant kind of uh, it's, it's offense. It's not at all. Yeah. It's not a, it, we are, this is a new kind of living with one another. Yeah. You know, Jesus, like another time when Jesus said, uh, er, everybody lords it over everybody, but not so among you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, so I, I would, my question would come out of that is, you know, how, how am I treating the least of these? How am I treating, you know, even my fellow brothers? My, just do I... Is, is my cynicism or is my, mm. my own life experience, my wounding, informing how I love? And, and am I willing to change that for the yeah, sake of the kingdom? Yeah. Uh, similarly, my question is, who is outside of care? Who is outside oh. of our purview of care? Yeah. You know, and, and, and um, who is exempt from care the care of others. I, I'm not exempt from the care of other people right. in this in this fellowship, and no one is exempt from my care. Right. But it's really a rhetorical question. Who is exempt from that care? Yeah. None of us are. Amen. So. Well, thank you for tuning in with us. We'd love to know your comments, and, and we, we, we look forward to having Pastor Chris back with us next week. Absolutely. Team all Absolutely. together. See if Toto's playing anywhere. Uh, <laughs> that's probably where Chris is right the, now. The oldies circuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably where Chris. That's hilarious. Take care. Bye.